What we want to do is kind of take Don on this journey. I talked about Siddhartha. Let's really start taking things away from him. Let's really give him avenues to improve his life and show why they don't work. Here he is, meets, he meets this waitress. First of all, what he really wants is he wants Rachel Mencken, the one that got away, the life not lived. The first thing is to do is to reflect on life's path, right? He cannot be with Rachel Mencken. She's gone. He's been thinking about her. Who knows if we find out. He might have been thinking about her all the time. He doesn't know. But it definitely seems coincidence that she was on his mind and he found out that she's dead. It definitely fits Don's pattern and grieving people's patterns that he has this anonymous sexual relationship with this waitress. The fact that this waitress is in the same form as the woman, when we showed Don's fidelity at the beginning of season seven with, with Nev Campbell on the airplane, the woman who is completely cut out of the cloth. I mean, we literally, let's said, let's build Don Draper's ideal woman. Right down to the fact that she's like sad. Um, there's a depth to that, to the grieving that, that, that Don's attracted to. And that grieving people are attracted to each other. I think Betty had it too. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, it's a fact. <laughs> it's really not up for debate. Um, not for everybody, but it's not up for debate. And so Don's fixation on this waitress and his impulsive pursuit of her and the revelation of her backstory, which is grief. And the fact that she says no, she just closes it off. It's a rejection that happens to him right when he is starting to cleanse himself of his old life, right? He realizes that he did wrong Megan. He tries to assuage his guilt by buying her off with a million dollar check. He is trying to start fresh. There's nothing fresh about this relationship for him. And I know it was confusing for people because I found out, I mean, we'd been done with the show for a while, but I have to acknowledge this in this thing that, you know, Someday, the daily relationship with the media will not matter, but this is something that definitely, even though I swore not to pay attention to any of it, because the show was locked and there's nothing I could do, you're constantly on the defensive for your show. Um, and uh, anyway, um, people had a problem with the fact that we were wasting their time in these few remaining hours. And that just was like, stunning to me. <laughs> I was like, just like, give us a chance. There is a point to the story. And it's an interesting story on its own. Oh, yeah. No, it's really interesting. If it was a regular season, I'd be interested in it. But I mean, you only got six episodes left. I'm like, so what's supposed to happen? Like, what do you want? Oh, you want to see like Don and Joan sleep together. And then that doesn't work. You want to see like everything you ever fantasized would happen on the show. I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to maintain the reality of the show. I'm not just turning it up to 100 so that you can, you know, get the your, your fantasy season of Mad Men because now that it's over, you know. In fact, the weird thing is the last few episodes of the, se of the series matter the most in a way to keep the tone consistent or it will destroy what you felt all along. That was my feeling. Like, I don't want to just, like, go into some weird thing, um, you know, just to, like, satisfy that. Uh, there were things I was curious about, and there's, you know... We don't deliberately not resolve things. I, we, we pay attention to what we think is important for Don. So that story of knowing that I wanted him on the road, knowing that I wanted him to shed his identity, knowing that we, um, I originally thought the waitress would happen out on the road. And Semi uh, said, they, they're like, we have to, that has to be part of the reason he goes out on the road. And also it's like, how much do you really want him by himself? It really ended up being like two and a half episodes. But um, the way that the waitress paid off for me when he goes to her family and he's posing to be that guy, when he walks out of that meeting, that was just um, another one of those visual things that you write down and you say, I hope this works. And Phil shot it really well. The special effects are really good with the airplane, you know, with the, the we've heard Don talk about the fantasy of going on an airplane when they had Mohawk. Like, you just don't want to be in that meeting. <laughs> you want to be on that plane. Um, going somewhere. So, um, there were some things that had to be stripped away. He had to deal with his 
his PTSD, basically his shame for for uh, for killing Don Draper and taking his name. He had to deal with the fact that he was alone and that was of his own making. He had to deal, we had to deal with the fantasy that, um, that Don has never shared, but, the, but, but America does, that the heartland and the real people are the honest, that that's the, he's got to get out of New York City to be a really honest person. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> never felt it to be true, but it's part of American mythology. Um, yeah, like just working, stripping him away one piece at a time and realizing that from basically when they get swallowed up that those are his goodbyes. That that's going to be the last scene with, with, you know, with Roger when he says you are okay. And I also, this is not a criticism of other shows, but I want, I didn't mind referencing earlier shows, but I didn't want to like, I didn't want the whole ending to be some reference to the beginning. 